Hi and welcome to Ottawa Eats. I'm your host Tom Schock and it's not often I get to start off the show with a quote from one of my favorite characters of all time, Ernie from Sesame Street. <clears throat> Here, fishy, 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 fishy. That's where we are today, La Point, where it's all about seafood and fish on Ottawa Eats on Rogers TV. You're welcome. This is Ottawa Eats, this is Dom. Dom, thank you for joining us once again. He's a familiar face on the show. He's actually the co-host when I'm not around, or the host, or whatever. I'm looking for a part-time job. I oh, don't really? Have, I don't have enough going on right now. So am I, you hiring? Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, uh, and what a lovely establishment it would be to work in. Uh, we're at La Pointe, but there's a couple of uh, ways that we can explain this to you. So it's not just a fish market, it's also a restaurant. We're gonna pop into the restaurant later, but first, um, this is a beautiful, beautiful location. If you are looking for premium quality fish, this is where you're coming, right? Absolutely, yeah. we have a wide variety of uh, fresh fish and seafood. We have uh, whole fish. Mm -hmm. We also have a new uh, fresh uh, prepared foods line and uh, a custom smoke uh, division right. where we're custom smoking uh, fish and S seafood. So if you're someone that um, maybe you're doing a potluck kind of thing where everybody has to bring something for a, a barbecue or uh, you want to impress somebody with a really brilliant piece of smoked fish, then this is where you're going to come. Absolutely. We have lots of unique items uh, that you don't find in a lot of uh, grocery stores. We are one of Canada's oldest uh, independently owned um, retail mm -hmm. specialty food markets. Right. Uh, now, with some of the fish that you have here, uh, this is not something you're going to find in your regular grocery store. This is something you're probably only going to find here. So can you take us through maybe um, some of the things that you really like about this, this market here in particular? Well, I like that uh, everything is visible. We get fresh, uh, fresh fish in uh, three to four times a week. And the staff here is very knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. The manager has been in the fish business for 25 years. And we have uh, just a great team here and yeah. very knowledgeable. That's all I can say, really. Well, I mean, I mean, it speaks for itself. Yeah, but one of the things, one of the biggest things, if you're talking to any chef or anybody that, that likes fish, is freshness is probably one of the most important things you can have with a fish. Absolutely. Um, so uh, as you, when you come here, you really see the beautiful colors and how it's, it's, it's clean and it's easily presentable. So when you're looking for something that is in the, the seafood realm, what is the one piece that you're probably the most proud of that you have here? Just the colors. Uh, we get fresh fish in uh, three times a week, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the, we have it cleaned and filleted for people as needed. Yeah. And we have lots of chefs who come in here who, uh, who request special items, yeah. and uh, we, we custom make uh, different items for different chefs across the city. Okay, because there's two locations, uh, this location, if you're looking for where we are right now, where is that? We are at 46 Byward Market, right mm -hmm. in the middle of the Byward Market, and there are also four other restaurants that are attached to the brand. Okay. Uh, there's one in Canada, there's one in Orleans, one in Bell's Corners, and there's one right around the corner here on York Street at 55 right. York. So the fish you see here, that you will see here, okay. is what you're going to get at, at the restaurants as well. So if you do want to come down and get it for yourself, you can, but you can also try out the restaurants and see how the experts do it, right? Yeah, absolutely. And we also do uh, uh, fresh fish of the day uh, in our new kitchen that we uh, just had installed here. We have a lovely young lady who cooks here every day. Okay, so people are looking for, uh, let's say, a Quick large... lunch or uh, catered uh, oyster trays, yeah. uh, smoked salmon trays, uh, Everything. anything to do with fish. Yeah. Uh, we have the ability to customize and adapt to every need. I'm going to test your business knowledge. You ready? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I love the panic in his eyes already. Yeah, it looks uh, good. Um, if people want to order something, something of a larger quantity, what, where do they go? Website or a phone number where they can call uh, The f website is uh, lapointefish.ca. There's uh, the phone number here is two three three six two two one. Sorry, seven eight nine six two two one. Oh, all the uh, all the phone numbers start with the same. You had uh, an A plus, now you got a B. Well, we also have a wholesale division. So if you're talking really large quantities, you want to call the uh, the wholesale uh, division, uh, which mm -hmm. is two three three six two two one. Otherwise, it's seven eight nine six two two one here. If you were the one of the people on Jeopardy, you'd be the one that finished second. Yeah, I'm only the vice president. Yeah. The president is uh, someone else, and he's much uh, <laughs> much more knowledgeable. <laughs> all right, we're going to see some of the great quality uh, fish that they do here, some of the smoking and curing, and all the different things that go on behind the scenes here at La Pointe on Ottawa Eats. Not bad, Don. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
This is Ali. Ali is the Smoke Master General. She came <laughs> up with a title uh, herself. She's very inventive. I like that. Um, but if people actually want to know what you do, can you give us a description of what you do? Yes. So um, I, I'm in charge of all the smoking of the fish here. Um, I design the menu for our little lunch counter and I'm the chef. Ooh. So all the recipes are my own and stuff that I figured out for myself. Right. So if you are coming here, uh, there are the there's the catch of the day sandwich and all that kind of stuff that you can order here. So that would be you. Yeah. That's okay. My, that's my doing. All right. And every day you get to decide what the catch of the day is. Yes. And well, technically the counter decides for us. We uh, we go with um, whatever fish is the freshest that has come in that would work the best. Mm. One that we have a little bit too much of, then we just pass it through the lunch counter. Mm. Stupid counter. Stupid there's a counters. stupid counter over there. Do you have a war with them? Is there like a divide? Sometimes. A little bit of West Side Story, you know, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, not really. We get along really well. <laughs> All right, Ali, what is this that we're looking at right here? So uh, this right here is a um, smoked octopus. This actually comes from Portugal. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's covered in my own little secret blend. So then followed by that, we have the um, smoked alligator. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Cajun spiced as well. So it reminds me a little bit more of the Louisiana where it comes from. And this bad boy here is a smoked gulf shrimp, which also comes from the same region as the alligator down, uh, down in the Gulf of... Florida, mm -hmm. and they're all smoked here in house. All right, so if people want to get something that is Different. basically just like an, an hors d'oeuvre that you could put out and people yeah, could just kind of take, this is something that a they lot would of get. people use the smoked octopus on um, sushi mm -hmm. as like uh, like an octopus thinly sliced um, shishimi. I can't remember which one it is, <laughs> and it works as like a charcuterie as well, and. Um, or just order it so people if they want something different. Yeah, or have it in your cup holder in your car and gnaw on it as you're on the 417. You'd be surprised a lot of people do that actually. Really? People come in and just like order one tentacle and they're like, I just wanted a snack and uh, it's one of our best sellers. I thought I wasn't going to sell at all, but one people, tentacle to go, please. One tentacle to go, yeah. <laughs> Got a hell of a drive ahead of me. Gnaw <laughs> away on their tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, out of these two, do you, do you have a favorite if, if it's not here? Is there a different one that you like? Um, I'm a huge fan of the octopus just because the fact that uh, my, my father's family is half Portuguese, so I grew up eating octopus by the bowl full. Okay. So I kind of dig it. It's reminiscent of my family. All right. Uh, could I try a, a bit of that? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah for sure. Because you said you wanted to see if I could try some alligator. I've never had alligator before. All right. There so you this go. is... It's good Ooh, to go. It's, very it, it tastes like chicken, honestly. It's uh, it's kind of like. Mhm. Mm it tastes like Cajun chicken. It's got a little bit of fishy fla flavor to it, but that's expected. Not very much so. No. It's the smoking. I like the spice. It's like if if a tuna and a chicken cuddled, and then uh, that's what the flavor is to me. <laughs> and you cover it in Cajun spice and smoke it. Like I said, cuddled. Thank cuddled. you for that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Okay, that's amazing. So All right. come in and try that. That's absolutely stunning. So let's uh, right. talk about some of the the fish that you have here. Alrighty, so um, this is uh, one of our best sellers is obviously salmon. So uh, this is a beautiful Atlantic salmon. Um, it's a uh, farmed, it's a uh, aquacultured, which means that it's a uh, farmed fish mm -hmm. without use of antibiotics. So it is a sustainable and organic method of farming fish. And uh, so before you smoke it, you have to cure it. And uh, a lot of people don't know what curing is, but curing is a, it's, it's how you um, half cook the fish with a mixture of salt sugars and uh, various spices that I cannot reveal because they are my own secret spices. Mm. So uh, what you do is you just basically cover the fish, coat it completely. Now you're not messing around, right? Wow. No. Okay. No, it's no, not no. a dash, it's a mitful. Yeah, it's because like uh, you really want to cover it because the, the salt is what's going to help to cure the fish. This is this is going to be a hot smoke, so this uh, the heat will actually cook that a little bit. But if this was a cold smoke, the salt is actually what is the main cooking ingredient. Does this also keep some of the moisture in as well, so exactly. it doesn't completely dry out? Yeah. Okay. It's uh, and it gives a different texture than an actual just cooked salmon. So can you explain real quickly what is the difference? Because a lot of people um, you'll see them everywhere in hardware stores. You'll, you'll see a smoker. What is the difference between a cold and a hot smoke, other than the obvious? Really, um, is it temperature and that's it? Pretty much. Yeah, it's the duration. So. Um, a cold smoker, you actually have to put ice in and you keep the fish at a low, low, low temperature for around two to three hours. Mm -hmm. um, and you leave it uh, just to fill up the chamber with smoke as much as you can. Then you put ice in, put the fish in, let it sit. Whereas a hot smoke, you keep the heat going, keep smoke going, and you can uh, reduce or get rid of the, uh, si the um, reduce or keep in. I forgot the word in English. Augmenter, in French. Augmenter. Augment? Augment the, uh, uh, there yeah. we go. Yeah. <laughs> To augment the uh, the amount of smoke in the chamber, mm -hmm. so it's it's a different uh, different temperature in, in this thing. But you can have any machines that you get in the hardware stores can be cold smoking, can be hot smoking. Okay, it's all about all right. the, their lowest 
max minimum point and maximum point. I just yeah. gotta kind of know what you're doing, sort of like yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a lot of honestly, it was a lot of uh, trial and error mm -hmm. <laughs> when I first started doing it, but uh, it's worked out now pretty darn good. So. Okay, so you've got this all covered up. So what would be the next step in this then? And um, this would sit. If this is gonna be a hot smoke, it's gonna sit for uh, 24 hours, and uh, then I'll rinse off all of the cure, mm -hmm. and after that, I will smoke it. And if it was a, if, it, if it was a cold smoke, I'd put you put another tray with weight on top of it, which really helps to draw out the moisture and cook the fish and draw out the oils as well. And you leave that for about three days to cure. You rinse it off and then you uh, let it sit in the fridge for a day so it can build up a, like a sticky skin over top of it. And then you cold smoke it. Oh, okay. So yeah. each process has its own it's kind has of- has its own art form to it. Right, Like okay. I said, a lot of trial and error. Right. <laughs> um, okay, so you've got this and you, I mean, I've tried some of the alligator, which is absolutely amazing and stunning. What is your favorite piece of, of fish or seafood here? Um, I'm a huge oyster lover, big really? time oyster lover. It's kind of what got me into, it was my gateway drug to uh, being a fishmonger. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it's kind of how I started off my, my whole career in this industry and I love it. I, I, I could eat oysters by the dozens and dozens. Okay, I'm gonna ask you um, kind of an obvious question but maybe a little bit of an embarrassing question. Um, a lot of people, uh, if, especially if you meet a butcher or someone who works in a shop like this, they say, doesn't the smell bother you? Does it? Did it? And did you get over it? Or is it something you just kind of grew up with? I, I don't know. I mean, like I, my favorite smell in the world is walking next to a, the ocean. So mm -hmm. when people are like, oh, it smells like fish. I'm like, I know, right? And like, yeah. I think it smells good. So I guess I've never noticed it or cared mm -hmm. or now I've gotten used to it. As I say with the Febreze course, I've gotten nose blind. I, d I don't personally think I smell like fish, but my husband thinks I do, so, <laughs> yeah. Fine, absolutely fine. Yeah. I don't usually smell the guests on the show. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's That's, all good. Uh, may have been a little bit too far. Was that too far? No, it's all good. Have okay. I smell right. okay today. <laughs> um, can you tell us just a little bit uh, what people can order from the counter here other than the, uh, the catch of the day? What else they could get? Um, one of our best sellers is our chowder. Mm -hmm. uh, we do, it's uh, my, uh, it's Grammy Ryan's, uh, base chowder, her whole recipe from start to finish. So it's uh, it's pretty darn tasty. It's one of our best sellers as well. Um, and I keep it really authentic. The shells are still in there. Uh, like the mussels and the clams it's, are all in there. It's very, very authentic. Um, people always, people love our fries. I don't know why, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's they're like a chip and a, uh, they're like a chip and a fry blend. And they come with the fish and chips. They come with the catch of the day. They come with the double salmon burger. And you can just buy them on the side too, which a lot of people tend to do. So yeah, that yeah. would be the, the best ones you can get here. All right. Our fish and so, chips are good too. Come on in, see Allie, and uh, you can see some of the amazing stuff that she does. The alligator is worth the trip in, in itself. Uh, and obviously you have your wide variety of choices of any kind of seafood that you want. And why not grab a sandwich or maybe some chowder and sit in here and, and have a, a beautiful quick lunch, why not? And then she can explain to you why she smells as good as she does. <laughs> All right, we've moved to the restaurant location. This is the beautiful Tristan. Beautiful Tristan, say hello to everybody at home. Hello, everybody. Uh, <laughs> what's the address if people are coming to the actual restaurant? It is 55 York. Okay, so if you are coming here and you're walking downstairs and you're going, oh, well, there's an entire restaurant here. Oh, this is kind of amazing. This is the person that's gonna be making your food. And the first thing that we're actually gonna do is your traditional fish and chips. Fish and chips. Uh, so what is not including here, I'm gonna put you on the spot, you ready? right off the hop, he hates me already. What is the best fish and chips you've ever had? Not including here. I would have to say East Coast. Yeah? Yeah. Somewhere on the no, East Coast? No specific place, yeah. just it's Somewhere on the East Coast? East Coast. Okay, that's a safe bet, I like this place is safe. He's never gonna steal second, he's gonna stay right there, that's yes. what he's gonna do. Okay, so what's involved in this, Tristan, exactly? You're, you're getting the fish, we saw the fish over at the actual fish market, yeah. so you get it here, then what do you do with it? Basically, I just cut it as it is, mm -hmm. batter, deep fry. All right, let's get right into it then. Sure. Okay. So this is just your basic kind of flour and then your batter is something that you would make as well? Is that a specific recipe for the it? The batter well? is a specific recipe. And you won't tell us what that I is? I will not tell you what it is. Wonderful, there I won't is ask. There is a lot of beer in it. That's about as much can as I Can I drink the batter? Would you like to? Like just a little sip? <laughs> maybe after dinner, I guess. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah. Okay, we'll just save that for another time. So just basic flour into the batter. 
get a nice coat. And that is it. You got about three minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, just watch the magic happen. Now, fish and chips, if people are, are going to try and make this at home, what's one of the biggest mistakes that people usually make when they're trying to make fish and chips? Too thick. Batter too thick. The batter's too thick? Batter is always too thick. Too much flour, baking soda. So it burns? It doesn't cook in the middle. Okay. It burn on the outside, not cooked in the middle. You get like a soggy, the texture is just bad. What's the kind of fish you should use for fish and chips traditionally? Uh, any white fish, a thin white fish, yeah. uh, cod, haddock, uh, even pickerel is good. Okay. Uh, if the fish is too thick, then the same thing. You're going to burn the outside, inside is going to be raw. So something like salmon is probably not recommended for fish and chips? Salmon? Uh, depends on how thick. The tail pieces of salmon would actually work very well. Really? Okay. But salmon is always better if it is medium medium well. Okay. Could you do something like this pan fried as well? Of course. Yeah? yeah. And you'd get similar results? Uh, you won't. Well, with our batter, it's very thin. Mm -hmm. uh, you will get basically the same thing with our batter, but once again, if you make it at home, uh, your batter's not going to Okay. You're going to burn. The kitchen's going to smell. It's going to smoke. It's going to cause <laughs> chaos. Let's let, let, let Tristan handle it. It's just, uh, it's easier to just come here. It's just, you don't need to cook fish and chips at home. What's the smelliest fish that you've cooked? What's the one that's... The smelliest? Yeah. Uh, halibut. Yeah? Halibut is... You know when somebody's naked halibut? The whole house is full of it the pretty whole, much? You smell like this fish for eternity. Mm -hmm. You cannot shower that smell out. <laughs> <laughs> I think my dryer still smells like halibut. Oh, really? Yeah. Was that the one and only time you made halibut? Uh, it used to be on the menu. I wish it still was, but mm -hmm. uh, seasonal. Okay. So, right. A little break. Like I said, so our batter is not too thick. Well, it's a very thing. light batter. So, and then it's just simply salting the fries. Coleslaw, we make mm -hmm. everything here, and then, just one second. Tartar sauce, lemon wedge, and then your fish. I stole a fry. That is it. Is that okay if I stole a fry? You can steal the whole plate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Traditional fish and chips, done by Tristan. Now the uh, tartar sauce. Is that something you make in-house as well? Everything's made in-house. That's also a secret recipe. Also a secret recipe. Okay, so we've decided not to stare into each other's eyes longingly. Instead, we're going to make uh, another dish. And what is this that we're making here? This is our basque. Okay, what is basque if people don't know what that is? Basque is, it's basically a seafood stew. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's the first thing that you're doing? Just here? browning a little bit of butter, yeah. then add some red onion, some bell peppers, and we let that saute. We're just going to let the vegetables sweat. I will then add the seafood, the scallops, the mussels, and then once again saute. Let the mussels sweat. Uh, they will start to open. Mm -hmm. And then it's a tomato-based broth that is basically going to be the soup part. Is it a specific kind of seafood that you always put in a basque? Is it, or can you interchange between mussels and something else or just anything? Just, okay. Anything? It's just a stew. Just a stew. And the scallops. If people are looking for mussels from an actual fish market, like you have here, what should they be looking for? One thing that they should always look at is the harvest date. You want, especially with mussels, you want it to be as fresh as possible. Uh, 
the longer they sit, one or two die, they open up, release the juice, and mm. it's going to kill the rest. And it's a terrible smell. You don't want to eat it. You'll get very sick. Right. So just freshness. So when the mussels are opening, that's when I'll be adding the broth. And again, this is a secret recipe that we're talking about here. Secret recipe. Do you keep secrets well? Uh, yeah, because I forget them. Oh, perfect. <laughs> You're like a vault. Like a really horrible vault a that nobody shady. can ever <laughs> open again. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> so something like this, you would let this simmer for... A few minutes. A few minutes? A few minutes. Uh, just seasoning, salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. To top this off, uh, just a grilled piece of white fish kind of falls apart. So this is basically where we want it to be. It just comes down to tasting. You want to make sure seasoning is good. You don't want it to be bitter. Oh, I'm tasting. Oh, no, you're tasting. Oh, wow. That's amazing. A little bit of spice to it. Creamy. Um, and when it comes to plating, some people just dump it in, uh, mm -hmm. do a little presentation just because it's on camera. <laughs> oh, for us? Oh, that's a special day. <laughs> wow, it smells amazing. That nice creamy, buttery, and spicy smell at the same time. Beautiful. just a little bit of cod just as a garnish mm -hmm. this is all gonna get gets to the plate like their table like this mm -hmm. and then they just mash it all up with their right. fork then serve with bread or whatever they want crostini bread tortillas even mm -hmm. and that is our basque would you like to yell soups on soups on can you be more enthusiastic about soups on Soup's on! You did great. <laughs>